Okay. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. How was lunch? <laughs> Good? Great. Okay. So I'm Rav Davidson. I'm the Director of Program Management for Application Insights. And I have with me today, oh, you're here, Rahul Bagaria, who is a senior PM uh, on the Application Insights team and one of our experts for Application Insights. And Darren Jefford, who is the lead architect in our services organization, who is working closely with some of our top customers. And together, we want to talk to you about and actually experience with you how we do deep diagnostics with Application Insights. But just before we start, I want to get to know uh, you guys a bit. So how many of you have already seen Application Insights? Oh, wow, great. And how many of you are actually using it? Awesome, OK. So we'll, uh, we'll do our best to make this session really ex exciting for everyone. We'll spend just a few minutes uh, on what Application Insights is and why we need it, although it looks like uh, most of you know. So we'll do it very briefly. Uh, for those who don't. And then we will really focus our session on what's new in Application Insight using a real life example. And at the end, we will be happy to take questions. If we run out, run out of time, we will uh, stick around and, uh, and answer any question. OK, so let's start. Why do we need Application Insights? So as developers who are building web application and services, our world is constantly changing. Our application is built on of multiple tiers and components. It's deployed in data centers all over the world. And we have users who are accessing it for their, from their device of choice, of which we have no control. Typically, it's also dependent on other services that may be owned by our own team, but in many cases, may be third party. And we are working really hard to improve the application introducing new functionality, improving performance, and addressing all kinds of uh, business requirements. In order to do it, many of us adopted agile and DevOps uh, processes. So we are basically, with continuous integration and continuous de deployment, we are updating our application on a daily or a weekly basis. How many of you are actually updating your application on a daily or weekly basis? OK, OK, we do. So uh, it's all in, uh, with our, all in the goal of, uh, of actually making our application better for our users faster. That's our goal. In reality, there are many moving parts. And anything might break in any of these components at any given time, which, as we know, might be day or night. So we need a really good way to quickly find out when there is a problem and fix it before it actually affects our users. I think we all know that the time it takes us to fix a problem or the firefighting time, it doesn't just affect our users and business. It also affects us, us and our team's quality of life and, uh, and also actually keeps us from working on the stuff that we actually love to do. So, Definitely, we want to be able to fix issues fast. So we want to be able to answer questions like, is my application uh, crashing? What exactly happened? And many others. So just for the few who hasn't, haven't seen Application Insight, just in a nutshell, Application Insights lets you do all of that and more. We collect telemetry from each and every tier of the application. Things like requests, page load, exceptions, uh, traces, anything that we can collect automatically, plus we let you send us your custom telemetry. We then process it in our backend so we can alert you as soon as there is a problem, so you can investigate it, analyze your telemetry, and answer any of those questions before it affects your users. So in order to show you all of that, we actually decided to take a real-life example now. Darren, let's uh, show it. Great, if you can switch. I'll try to no, switch. No, no. Oh, switch. switch this one, okay. 
Good afternoon, everyone. So the, the example we're going to use uh, this afternoon is the Real Madrid project. So all of the telemetry I'm going to show is actually from the production system, which is, a, which is always dangerous because every time I go in, it's moved and changed. So uh, I'm sure some things will not quite work uh, as I expect. Just in terms of kind of background, um, so Real Madrid is a, a very large uh, Azure-based solution that's been live uh, for just over a year now. The the goal of the project is really to try and uh, engage you know, over 400 million fans that Real Madrid have around the world. Before this project, they can engage the fans that come into the stadium, but the stadium isn't really that big. So actually, how can you start to engage and crucially monetize and actually learn from those fans around the world? So it's a large Azure-based solution. There's mobile apps for uh, iOS, Android, Windows uh, in the various stores. Um, and on the websites and so on. Um, and actually less than 3% of, um, of that kind of fan base are actually in Spain. Now, when we actually started this project, there were a number of kind of, sort of challenges or, or kind of opportunities, depending on your um, point of view. Um, so one is everything is in Azure. There's no VMs, there's all platform as a service. We're using CRM online on the back end. Global deployment, so we're, as you would imagine, using traffic management. Uh, football matches, um, obviously, is a huge uh, increase in the number of concurrent users, so we have to kind of load balance traffic around the world. But that actually generates a bit of a unique challenge. And if you're trying to stitch telemetry together and you've got requests going to this data center and that data center and devices and so on, trying to get an end-to-end -end unified view is really hard. Um, Asynchronous architecture, there's no way you can design and, and deliver and be successful with a solution this large uh, unless you're putting messages into queues and doing background asynchronous processing. So, of course, that increases the complexity even more. There's no direct coupling. You've got things putting stuff in queues. What happens if those things don't get pulled out of queues? Um, very high volume. And actually, for Microsoft services, it was a bit of a, a, a fairly new um, challenge for us around, we need to support this. So Microsoft, we can design and deliver these solutions and put them in our cloud, but then we normally say to the customer, well, you have to support it now. You have to look after it. You need to feed and water it. Actually, this customer, you know, they don't really have an IT department in the same way that a typical enterprise would have. So if we just give them a bunch of uh, Azure PaaS services, yeah, it's not going to end very well. So we actually needed to support it. And I've done enough projects over the, year, uh, over the years um, where I've inherited solutions with, with next to no telemetry and I had, had to suffer uh, that pain. So making sure we, did, um, we, we addressed this was a, a fundamental requirement from me. Just in terms of scale, uh, I had a look when I was preparing for this demo. Um, we are generating uh, nearly 4 billion telemetry points a month with, uh, with application insights. In terms of complexity of adding AI into the solution, it's one click for, most, for almost all of the components. We haven't had to write code. We haven't had to write ingestion code in databases and reports and queries. You go into the components, you check the application insights box, and away you go. If I come up with a telemetry solution that had required an army of developers and testers, you know, it would never have got done. So, all the telemetry you're about to see um, is uh, almost entirely out of the box with AI. So if you can switch across. So this is a dashboard that you know, I've, I've kind of customized that gives you an all up kind of overview across the three main regions that we're operating in. You can see server response times, and I'll, I'll show you the application maps afterwards. So if we drill into Europe, for example, um, you can see the average response time was around 200 um, milliseconds. Let me. Click on that again. See, I knew it would play up. <laughs> it worked so well before. It did. Here we go. So when we drill into this, what you should see is a breakdown of the, the server response time, um, the, kind of, uh, the various re requests. But something that I find fascinating is the dependency duration. So knowing that your web service is taking 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds is fine. But it's not generally the root cause of a, of a slow performing service. It's actually things you're calling. You're talking to a SQL database or an Azure table or a queue uh, or a downstream web service. So actually, how long are those things taking? And actually, are, are there any kind of root problems there? So I can kind of drill in to the dependencies. 
again, these are all looking pretty good at the moment. This is kind of the last 24 hours. And when it wakes up, while we wait for that to wake up, you can look at server response times. You can see the various uh, REST services here, how many times they're being called, kind of the, the standard deviation of the, of the duration time. And again, down here, you can see the, ver the, the top dependencies that we're actually talking to and how many seconds that they're taking, isn't it a queue, and so on. Um, and if we go back to here, I can actually uh, group the dependencies by, come on. Okay, we'll, we'll do that in a minute. Okay, so again, so you've got the dependencies. I can go ahead and drill into a particular server request and this will come up. And now you're gonna see all of the actual ASP.NET or the REST web service requests shown here. And you can drill into the actual instances of the service and actually see um, what's happened. It was so fast before the demo. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and drill into this particular um, request. We're gonna see a number of the instances now. The wireless network doesn't like this. No. Okay, so we drill down here. There's a bunch of properties that we collect. We can actually see the calls to remote dependencies and how long they took. And um, if we pick a different session like this one, you can actually drill in and actually look at the, all of the telemetry across the whole user's session. So you've got a particular web service request, but what happened in the mobile app? What are the other web services that were called? And actually how long um, were those things uh, taking? Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh. Your it computer is offline. Network. Well, it's, it's, it's connected to the build network, which is never going to be... Uh, we move on and we'll yeah, we'll move on and we'll come back. Okay. Yep. So the, the key part kind of in summary of what you should have seen if it, was, uh, if it was working is all that telemetry is collected across all the sessions. You can see all the dependencies. You can drill in and actually look back at the entire user session and also actually look at a particular user and see all of the activity that they've done over the last six months. Uh, how many times have they used the app and so on. I'll go ahead and put my Wi-Fi key back in. <laughs> so if you want to carry on. So while Darren is fixing his wireless network, um, where is the clicker? Okay. Let's shift gear to, uh, to talk about uh, what's new. So you let me know when you're ready, okay? Yeah. So personally, I've been in the business of developing software, and specifically software for developers around the quality and performance of their applications for uh, over 20 years, actually from the very early days of the web. And in my opinion, this domain has never been so exciting as it is today, especially for uh, engineers like me who love data and uh, playing with data. Today, powered by big data and machine learning, application insights actually lets you analyze your telemetry, diagnose issues, and overall make you a lot more insightful about your application and users. So let's see how we do that. First is what we call the intelligent application performance management, with, which proactively detects um, triage and diagnose issues. What is proactive detection? We analyze your telemetry in our machine learning engine, so we basically learn the normal behavior of the application, so we can alert you on any anomalies. And then we provide you all relevant information so you can diagnose it. This week we have announced our new near real-time proactive alerting. It is basically triggered when there is a spike in application failures. We then run clustering so you, we can determine the special characteristic of these failures. So as an example, we can tell you that right now users who are accessing your application from Northern Europe going to your data center in the UK, actually to a specific version running in the data center in the UK, are experiencing a high rate of failures. And um, 
and we provide you the relevant information, for instance, traces, dependency failures, and so on, so you can investigate the problem. Talking to some of our customers who have already been receiving these alerts, they tell us that often we detect problems that they were not aware of, or at least not aware of yet. And also, they're just looking at the, the information we provide, often they know what the problem is. There is a problem in dependency, or it's the recent deployment that they just started rolling out to that data center that is causing a problem, and so on and so forth. Assuming the network comes back, you will see it live uh, in a minute. For now. OK. <laughs> the second part, complementing what we do automatically for you, is our new analytics feature, which lets you answer almost any question you have about the application immediately. You know, when we investigate a problem, one question leads to the other. Actually, often one question leads to many others as we explore multiple directions. And what we want to do is continue and refine our questions until we pinpoint the problem. Analytics is built on a big data engine with an interactive query language that lets you ask these questions and get the answers. It is actually a technology that we've used internally at Microsoft for almost a year. You might have heard about it internally. We, we called it Cousteau. And those of you who read Brian Harry's blog, he, he just blogged about it recently. If you haven't, it's, it's highly recommended. So, we've, so internally, teams have been using Cousteau, including us, of course, for uh, almost a year. And the, the internal feedback has been phenomenal. Now, I don't know how many of you know Microsoft developers, but trust me, it's not an easy audience to please, so uh, uh, you should try. Um, just as an example, our Azure DB team, they've been one of our first customers, and they currently send us almost 200 terabytes of telemetry a day and issue about 50 million queries a month, which means it's, it's just an integral part uh, of, their, uh, of their operation. And we will see some uh, great uh, queries that Real Madrid is running, hopefully, uh, <laughs> in a few minutes. The third aspect is uh, being extensible and integrated. We do realize that you already have your uh, ALM and DevOps tools and uh, processes, and in order for our insights to be actionable for you, you want them integrated into your workflow. So we'll show you that as well. Are we ready? OK. Sure. So uh, let's dive into it. Rahul, yeah. I'll give it to you. Thanks, Mirav. So these are a bunch of interesting new capabilities. So let's deep dive into each one of them. And uh, we will have Darren come up in between and show uh, what we are talking about with real life examples. Okay. So the first one is intelligent APM that uh, Mirav was talking about. Uh, as modern application developers, we all know how crucial it is to be able to detect, triage, and diagnose problems before it starts affecting our customers and find and fix these solutions before our customers even know it. And Application Insights provides you all the tools to be able to get the right uh, information, the right telemetry, and uh, fix these problems instantaneously. The first one is detection. One of the most important things is for you to be able to figure out when something goes wrong and be alerted in almost a near real-time basis. But alerts are not uh, always that useful because to have an alert, you need to know what a threshold is. And more often than not, we do not know uh, yet uh, what threshold would be important to set up. And with Application Insights, you get this new proactive diagnostics experience that makes it so much easy. So with our machine learning based technology, we st uh, constantly understand your application architecture, performance patterns, application behavior, and everything. So that in almost real time, we can generate alerts if there is a service disruption going on, if there are any anomalous patterns that we detect in your application, and just uh, send you an email or send you an alert through the Azure platform so that you can uh, figure out what's going wrong and decide if you want to fix it. There are also a new dashboard functionality uh, that we just launched with which you can uh, pull in the charts, KPIs, and metrics 
across all your Azure resources, put it in a single place, monitor probably constantly, and even share with your colleagues. We also launched a new feature called Livestream Metrics with which you can figure out what's going on with your application metrics right at this very moment. And as I have been spending time at the booth uh, uh, like over the past couple of days, this is a really exciting feature that uh, a lot of you uh, have been uh, talking about at the booth as well. Once you decide that, uh, yes, an issue is there, do I need to fix it? Do you need to have more information to be able to make a decision, whether it's priority enough for you uh, to be able to spend some time diagnosing it? And with Application Insights, you get this real customer impact information where you can say that if an exception occurs, how many real actual customers are impacted by this? And this information is usually very important uh, for you to decide whether you want to go ahead and fix that problem. Another new area we uh, recently launched is the new application map capability. So with this, you can automatically discover your entire application topology across dependencies, client, and server components, and basically get a visual uh, feel or a visual map of your entire application stack. So if there are any bottlenecks, if some dependencies are not working, you can get right there in just one single picture. And you can click through to the relevant Azure resources or the specific exceptions or telemetry components to find the right information and fix it. Once you decide to fix a problem, the next step is to get all the information you need, uh, all the context you need to solve that problem. And since Application Insights collects all of these data points out of the box, you can get the exceptions, uh, APM data, dependency uh, issues, everything uh, right where you need it. One of the interesting things is if you are an Azure developer uh, developing cloud services or app services, you get much more deeper diagnostics information. So if there are any role lifecycle issues, like the role is uh, recycling, hung, not working, if there are any infrastructure performance issues with Azure, you can get all the information you need with Application Insights integration. So once you have been through this entire detect, triage, and diagnose cycle, usually at the end you know what your uh, uh, thresholds are, what your uh, uh, different patterns are that you would want to be alerted on in future. And with Application Insights, you can set up alerts on any of your metrics, traces, event data, APM data, and put those alerts uh, right on the dashboards or even generate real-time emails or integrate with your uh, third-party alerting mechanisms with our new webhooks integration. So one of our customers, Samtech, which is a global manufacturer of electronic interconnect solution blocks, have been using Application Insights a lot. And they have really benefited with our new proactive diagnostics experience. So they say that the near real-time capability of these alerts really helped them uh, instantaneously discover and fix issues they never knew they had. And uh, in most of their cases, the total downtime was less than 10 minutes. Isn't that exciting? So Darren, if the network is up, I think it's a good time to show how Real Madrid is taking uh, some advantage of proactive diagnostics and application map, right? Sure. OK. Six. Six. OK, take two. Let's see if this is going to work now. So just before we actually drill into it, I'll just uh, highlight what I was, what I was going to show before. So again, we've drilled into an individual request here. And uh, if we scroll up here, you can actually see all of the telemetry for the user's session. So this could be a failed request. So you want to see what happened before and what happened afterwards. You can click on that, drill into the overall session. And then if you look over here, we can see dependencies, requests, and so on across that whole user session. So that's across different data centers, different services, even from the mobile device all the way through. So a level of kind of stitching together of telemetry, which personally I haven't seen before. And we didn't really have to lift a finger. Um, and again, if you put context properties on your telemetry, we have the user ID here. You can actually go ahead in and actually do a search for a, a version number or a user ID and actually look at all of that user's activity over the last few months, actually just directly within the portal. Anyway, let's go and look at the uh, proactive, detection, proactive detection feature. So actually, taking a step back, before we actually kind of show this feature, um, Looking at the way that we are now running support for our customers, we have a tier two and a tier three support team. So the tier two team have a dashboard and they have queries and they sit there staring at dashboards, waiting for something to go wrong to triage it and take it forward. 
But how many times do those, do those teams of people that are staring at dashboards actually find the issues? It's typically users that find the issue and then actually raise it up. So where we want to go with this particular feature as it matures is removing our tier two feature entirely and using proactive detection to monitor the solution, find the issues, raise the support tickets as work items and actually push that back to tier three. So we want to relocate those people from tier two into actually fixing issues. So that's where we're going to and we're making some good progress towards that. So in our... Um, America's data center here, here are a few proactive detections. Of course, you don't want, them to, you don't want too many of these things because it wouldn't look very good about our solution. But there's a few examples here where it's actually highlighting a, a slow response. But the one down here is interesting. If you're looking at all up average request time for a particular you know, server or a data center, if one service, in, on one server even, is starting to degrade, you're not going to see that in these high-level averages. You're not digging into the details. So in this case, proactive detection is looking right down and actually spotting that this particular um, uh, REST call here is starting to, starting to degrade compared to historical performance. So if I go ahead and click on this, and this is very different to that th those manual alerts that you set up, which again are based on averages at, at, a, at a high level. Key thing here is highlighting the operation name. It's highlighting that, you know what, it's only 1.6% of all requests, and it's only actually impacting 11 users. So it's not a necessarily get everyone out of bed to go and fix it. So it's actually giving you an idea of severity and impact of whether you should be really scared or not. And again, it also highlights the response time of these requests. And actually, seven days before, actually, it was one point um, well, slightly higher. Um, but again, actually showing um, what it was like before. And you can go and compare the telemetry for when it was working well with, with actually um, uh, how it's actually performing now. And if we click on one of the other ones, you also get an idea here of this is a recurring issue. It's been, t been de detected two times over the last seven days. So actually, is it just, just a one-off, an anomaly, or something that's actually uh, uh, more serious? So already, this, we've been using this feature for, for quite a while within the Real Madrid solution, and it's enabled us to highlight very you know, subtle problems, like a certificate on one server somewhere uh, um, had a problem, and actually drilling right down into the problem. So it's, it's been quite transformational uh, just in this early stage for us. The other feature I want to show, which when I saw it this week, blew my mind. So this is the application map. So purely based on the telemetry that we're collecting that you've seen. Application Insights is actually building a map of the, of the interconnected systems as part of our architecture. Bear in mind, almost everything is asynchronous. So it's actually even harder to actually go and build this type of map. So we can see here, um, there's been 1 million requests in I think the last 12 hours or 24 hours or something. And you can see that it's highlighting as a result, we've made 12 million calls to Azure tables, 1.8 to a queue, 703,000 straight to HTTP, and, and so on. And actually highlighting what the overall kind of a millisecond here. So this is automatically generated from the telemetry. Now, knowing that the HTTP calls were quite slow is one thing, but if I go ahead and click this, it shows me all of the HTTP endpoints uh, that we're actually using as part of the architecture. We're using uh, Active Directory B2C here, um, we're using yeah, login.microsoft.com, Facebook. We can see that you know, um, there's been a number of issues here, 93% failures. That's quite, quite bad, actually. Um, again, you can actually go and drill in, look at those requests, look at the exceptions. So this is a fantastic kind of view, topology view of, in this case, our European uh, data center. And again, the same thing if we go to Azure table, for example. Cool. So again, you can see how long the various calls to Azure table and so on are taking. So again, a great, another great opportunity to take a telemetry, we're using it for support and so on, but actually then understanding the architecture, where is time being spent? And in this case, you know, where, where are the red exclamation marks around things that we want to go and look at? And again, we've got a different topology map for each of our data centers here. Cool. 
So uh, I really love how uh, Real Madrid is taking advantage of a new uh, capabilities with the application map and fracture detection. And uh, it's awesome to see that uh, you like it so much. So let's get back to our story and move on to the next new capability area. So Mirav mentioned at the beginning that uh, we just launched a new capability around analytics. And uh, I should say that it's one of my most favorite capabilities today in Application Insights. Uh, usually it's the case uh, that in a modern uh, complex application architecture, it's often very difficult to diagnose an application problem or even a gap uh, basically because it's uh, so much going on, so many tiers and components, and you need to basically connect information across different components, across different perspectives. So with the new big data query engine we just launched uh, with an application insights, you can get all that information, you can get all the answers to your queries almost instantaneously and get whatever data points you need to do root cause analysis of your problems. So uh, there are ad hoc queries that you can ask. You can iterate upon those queries. You can ask deeper and deeper questions and even do a full text search upon all the uh, terabytes of data points or uh, log messages or anything that you are sending to application insights. And uh, with the examples and scenarios that we have seen, uh, even when it's terabytes and terabytes of data, you get answers in as little as a few seconds. And that's really very powerful. One of the things uh, that uh, basically powers application uh, insights analytics is the powerful query language we uh, launched alongside it. It's kind of a SQL-like uh, query language, as powerful as SQL, but much more easier for complex queries. So you just pipe in diff, uh, like deeper and deeper iterations in that same query and start getting uh, richer and richer results, which we'll uh, see with some examples in a moment. So with this new query language, you can filter, join, and correlate data uh, across your different performance data points, usage behavior data points, and what all you are collecting with application insights. You can even calculate uh, new data fields by extracting and extending your data, basically convert uh, your existing data into something new that uh, you would want to care about and even generate some uh, statistical aggregations like average, min, max, uh, whatever is important to get the right answers. And one of the features that I love is uh, how easily you can generate some powerful, colorful new uh, visualizations with pie charts, bar charts, line charts, whatever makes it much more intuitive for you to understand uh, what's going on. And uh, one of the, like, interesting, powerful things with Application Insights is that since we are collecting data across your application, it's very easy for you to be able to correlate across different parameters like your service performance, business metrics, customer experience, and so on, kind of helping you get unique insights that might not have been possible uh, without this uh, capability. So one of the uh, customers that we have, uh, DNN, uh, also called uh, .NET Nuke, it's a CMS platform that powers uh, rich uh, websites and intranets. So they have been using analytics quite a lot uh, lately. And uh, this uh, say to us that uh, it's a missing part uh, of their equation. And analytics has helped them discover insights and find and fix problems they didn't uh, even know they had previously. One of the things that they uh, mentioned that I really like is that the power that you can get with analytics is limited by your creativity. You just need to ask the question, I wonder if. So Darren, I wonder if Real Madrid has some interesting queries uh, that we can show them uh, to show the power of analytics. We do indeed. Okay. So, uh, microphone working, yeah, perfect. So, We've been actually using the uh, application analytics feature again for quite a few months, and, and the support team um, uh, took a little bit of persuasion to say, hey, we've got another tool, uh, different query language, and so on. Within a few days, they had pages and pages of queries, and it's actually a fundamental part of their day-to-day -day workflow. So the portal's great for drilling into things, looking at the reports and so on, but then actually digging in and actually looking at the data is uh, uh, been hugely, hugely beneficial. Now, if you think about 4 billion telemetry points in a month, that's a lot of data. So any query tool that I've used over time, if you get that volume of data, 
you, you, you're not querying all of the data. You have to kind of break it down and query a very, 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 very small data set. I am going to run a few queries that get to my engineering colleagues. Like, oh my God, don't do that in a demo. But uh, it seems to work pretty well. And I think it will demonstrate just how it can query in real time across this data. So in terms of the latency of this, of this data coming in, uh, we're seeing you know, very low latency from these events being, uh, being generated by devices and, and web tiers and being available within application analytics, so, um, uh, which is a great um, thing to bear in mind. So in terms of the data sets that we have available, we have uh, on the left-hand side, we have traces. So the custom developer trace, if you're, if you're doing method in and out tracing of Hello World, you can go and see that. Custom events, if, you're, if you've added extra telemetry points inside of your code for when you're doing business operations like login or login failed, login successful, um, you can actually raise those as custom events. Uh, page views, so this can be web page views as well as actually pages inside your mobile applications. So actually what features are people using, how often, uh, how, how, how long are they spending in those pages. Requests, so web service requests, dependencies, exceptions, metrics, and, and kind of uh, test availability results. So there's a lot of information in here. And if you want to see the information that's available, if we hit requests, you can see there's, there's a lot of information in there, the name of the request, the result code, um, and also this kind of property bag of dimensions. So if you want to tag extra properties, a user ID on, a version number, whatever you like, again, you can filter and query across those items as well. So you can kind of extend that information. So let's actually show some queries. I've got a bunch of queries here. You don't want to see me type them all in and make embarrassing typos. So I'll start off with, with typing the first few in just so you get an idea. So I can type requests. And the first thing is, of all the requests, you typically then want to kind of filter it down with a, with, with a where clause to say, you know, where the timestamp is, like all requests in the last seven days or the last day. So um, if we go ahead and do that, I can say where, timestamp. And a, a great improvement in the application analytics stuff based on the Custo stuff we worked before is some handy functions like a go. And you can say one day, two days, seven days, 30 days. So without putting, messing about with date times and formatting, you can say, I want to see all the requests that are one day old, two days old, three days old. Really simple kind of concept, but, but really powerful. OK, pulling down all the requests for the last day is not particularly useful. You can do that in the portal. So can we summarize it? Can we actually say, can we summarize them by name and duration so we can actually see the slowest performing uh, pages? So I can go ahead and do summarize. And we'll use a function to calculate the average duration, which is a property on a request. And I'm going to group summarize it by name. And then we'll order by duration. So if I hit, go ahead and hit go. It's going to look at all of those requests in the last day, and it's going to give me a table view uh, of, of the requests and give you an idea of, uh, of the average duration. So the ordering does seem a bit wacky today, so I have let the engineering team know. But you can see um, the, the various kind of web service requests here. You can see the average duration. You can go ahead and actually, um, actually view this in a, in, a, in a bar chart. It's not particularly useful, but you can see kind of the heavy hitters in there. So really simple query. Um, let's move on to something a bit more, uh, sort of evolve it slightly. Again, we're going to look at three days' worth of data. And this time, we're going to summarize the count of the requests by the country. So maybe I want to produce a report saying, OK, are we engaging fans globally? Which countries are the most fans in? And actually, we can drill into here. And really quickly, is it four seconds? It's processed all those requests in the last four days. And you can see a breakdown by various countries of how many, uh, how many requests. So the Netherlands is really, really likes Real Madrid. So hey. Um, so again, drilling into that information. But then actually seeing, seeing that, OK, that's great. How about this query? So in this query, we're actually going to summarize the count of requests and uh, group them by country. But we're going to bucket them actually by, by day. So actually, uh, over, a, over a given kind of seven-day period, uh, which countries are actually using uh, the, the, the feature um, of the Real Madrid solution. So the bin function here is effectively like a bucket. So it's assigning them into day buckets. So if I go ahead and query this, again, you're going to see a standard table view, which isn't going to be that insightful on its own. Da -da. OK, so again, you can see the kind of grouping by timestamp. 
if I go ahead and choose a bar chart here, you can see over the last seven days, if I just scroll down, get the right scroll bar, Again, you can see this bar chart of how many kind of million uh, requests um, over the last week and actually which countries um, were, and again, you can highlight them as you go along and see um, the various kind of breakdown here. So really quick, really easy, all the requests in the last seven days. So if we kind of move on to the next one. So this is a great example. These are reports you know, historically I, I had to create over solutions that I built is percentiles. So saying the average duration is not what people want to see. They want to see the 95th percentile. And you get all the web server logs and you have to do all that crunching of numbers and so on. So again, I'm going to take the last 30 days of requests and we're going to generate a, percent, a 50th and a 95th percentile of that. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. So note this is 30 days worth of requests. I'll show you how many requests that is. So in my testing before, I think it takes about 15 seconds, um, which you may think is quite a long time. But when you see the number of requests, it's actually crunching through. I think you'll be impressed. So it's going to take longer than 15. Here we go. So again, it's actually done, built now, an average and a 50th and a 95th percentile duration of, the web of all the web service requests across this data center. Again, you can see some particular spikes. You can get the timestamp, drill in, look at the, request, look at the request, and start troubleshooting. So that took, how long did it take? 18 seconds. So if we actually summarize the count of all requests over the last 30 days, you'll see how many request records that application analytics has, uh, has gone through to go and process in real time. And from, mem from memory, it was 121 million requests that it's gone and processed for that report, which yeah, I was running a few of these requests yesterday. And uh, yeah, 141 kind of million requests there. So a huge amount of data and actually building these reports and so on. And I haven't seen at all that's been able to process that volume of, in of, of information before. Here's another request. Thank you. And that's to the engineering team on a, you know, an amazing job. And that really brings home you know, the fact that the Azure database team are using it. You think about how much traffic that they get, it's going to be even more in excess of, of Real Madrid. So if it's working at that scale, um, you shouldn't have too much to worry about. So in this request, we're looking at a particular country, and we, and we want to understand the client's usage over, over, over that whole day. So actually, 9 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, where are people most often using the application? So again, we're actually summarizing by the client IP, and we're doing some other kind of funky stuff to actually bring in and actually overlay the HTTP response code. So as the load goes up, are we getting an increase in HTTP 500s or 300s or whatever that, whatever that code is? So again, we're just showing more and more complexity that you can overlay on this. So this next one is um, a, an interesting query where, okay, we've looked at overall requests. We would actually want to look at requests that have failed. And then actually, of the requests that have failed, what are the, what's the actual exception that's actually caused that request to fail? And how many of those things are happening? If I'm going to go and allocate my dev team to go and spend some time, where should they focus their time? So we're doing um, the last seven days of all failed requests. And we're joining on exceptions and actually joining on the operation ID. And then summarizing by the count of the exceptions, the name and the method. So if I take. Uh, you know, user actions here, you can see there is a user action validation exception here. We've had 1,700 of those particular exceptions. And you drill down, and you can see you've had two of this particular um, uh, operation name failing. So again, what we're seeing here is the web service requests that are generating exceptions, and then what the methods or the assembly or the exception name, whatever it is, to actually then build a report, say to the dev team, OK, go and look at each of these and, and these kind of heavy hitters. Moving away from requests, so dependencies is the thing I keep going on and on about, because that understanding your dependencies and where time is being spent is a, is a crucial um, insight that you need to, uh, to master. So what we're going to do here is look over the last 48 hours and summarize the average duration uh, by the dependency type. So we can see that, you know what, tables, queues, blobs, really fast, 55 milliseconds or less. Perfect. HTTP, the average is 304. That's reasonably high. So actually, if I wanted to go ahead and actually drill in and say, well, 
oh, which web service is actually causing that problem? So again, I can come in and say, I'm only interested in the type of HTTP, and I want to now summarize the duration of by name. If I haven't made any mistakes, that should, and I have, let me just put equal equal there. So what we should now see is actually all the HTTP requests and the average duration uh, summarizing in here. So we can see calls to graph.windows.net is taking 314 milliseconds, and the other ones are you know, kind of pretty good. So, um, and then the last one, before we move on just to a few uh, app ones, um, are dependency. So this is actually a pretty interesting query. The engineering sp team spent a couple of hours working on this. It started off this long, and they've got this beautiful kind of query now. This is calculating a moving average of the dependency duration over the, over the last two days. So when it comes up, you'll see that you know, there's nothing much to see because it's actually reasonably consistent, which is a, a good thing to see. Um, but you'll see this kind of moving average of dependency duration over time. And of all the queries, that's the one that's going to take a while. How's my network doing? Oh, there we go. OK, so again, you can see the, if I put this into a report, again, you can see actually consistently over this um, kind of time period that they're pretty stable and so on. But moving average calculation is um, pretty complex to do otherwise. And it gives you an idea of degradation of performance over time. It can be very gradual. A couple more queries just to leave you on. Actually, within the, the mobile apps, in this case, is uh, the page views. So, um, what are the, uh, so what are the countries that the users are actually using the app? Uh, when this query comes back, we'll see the popular countries. So this is actually from mobile app kind of telemetry. So if I do a chart here, you can see Spain is incredibly popular, United States, Mexico, and so on. And the last query, just to show um, uh, kind of a bit of stitching together here, is we have an event when an application starts, and we have an event when the application stops. You could have an event when you start a transaction or stop a transaction. So actually calculating how long these transactions have taken, remember this is telemetry split across different data centers and so on. So actually what we're doing is going to, through the events, we're finding the start event, and then we're then joining on the suspended event using the, uh, the session ID uh, as a join here and actually calculating, in this case, how long this user is actually spending uh, doing this task or, or using the application. So you'll see here, client country of origin. We've got uh, kind of Peru. We've actually got the user ID we generate inside of the solution and a session ID, and you can see how long they spent using the application. So incredibly complex thing to do by yourself. And just to show the platform user ID, if I switch back to the request latency, I can take this custom property that we've tagged on all of our telemetry and actually query on it. So if I want to see what this user has done uh, in terms of, of web requests, I can go ahead and <laughs> it's lost the network. <laughs> yeah. So let me just give it two seconds and see if it uh, comes back. See, it lasted so long. Um, so what you would see here is actually uh, is oh, it's come back. Is we're actually filtering showing all requests for that user. And we can actually see uh, if it works actually over the last um, seven days or whatever it is, what are all the requests doing? So that user has raised their support ticket and says the app isn't working or I'm having these problems. They can you can actually drill in and look at all of the requests that they've done. And we can do the same thing on dependencies as well. So hopefully this gives you a bit of a flavor for the, the power of application analytics. These queries are kind of just scratching the surface of what is possible. I've seen some of the queries that engineering use for uh, actually using our live services, and they are a sight to behold. I'm not quite at that level myself. Um, so yeah. Awesome, Darren. I am always mesmerized when I see the kind of uh, queries uh, that with large data you can get so interesting answers in as little as a few seconds. And uh, thanks a lot for showing us that. So let's get back to our story and to our third new capability area, uh, which is DevOps integration. So as developers, we, of course, you might be using one or the other development environment. We would have at least some DevOps practices or workflows we would be using on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, one of the best things with Application Insights is that it has uh, so many integration points. And 
if you are a Visual Studio or a Visual Studio Team Services uh, customer, uh, with the integration points that we provide, it becomes very much easy to incorporate diagnostics into your existing practices, existing workflows, and just make your life uh, easier. So uh, with the new update 2 that we launched uh, for Visual Studio 2015, there are a bunch of uh, new interesting capabilities uh, that you might want to check out. Uh, so going forwards, we will uh, we now have seamless trace collection. So if you add application insights into your application, it automatically discovers whatever uh, logging or tracing infrastructure that you are using, and uh, is uh, like start sending those uh, log telemetry to application insights. You can search your entire production telemetry right from within the IDE. You need not go to the Application Insights portal uh, to diagnose the uh, problem. If you're using Visual Studio, search across your telemetry from right there. We are integrated with the Visual Studio Diagnostics Hub as well. So along with all the other debugging or diagnostics information, you are now also getting Application Insights events right there so that you can correlate it with any other information that you already have. And one of the uh, latest features just we uh, just launched is uh, Jump to Code. So uh, that was one of the uh, asks that we had for a long time. So since we are now uh, monitoring exceptions, giving you stack traces, you can click on that stack trace from the IDE and jump right to the method that was causing the problem. That's Visual Studio. If you're using Visual Studio Team Services, we do have many integration points there as well. If you are using release management, you can now see your release annotations plugged in right with your charts and performance data. So you can do those correlations saying if uh, something goes wrong, when did it start, which deployment caused it, which build caused it, and so on. If you want to uh, check how your application scales or performs uh, based on uh, like increasing user loads, you can take advantage of the cloud load testing integration and basically set up these load tests and track your performance accordingly. And one of our highest asked user voice requests was to enable work item tracking. And this is a feature that's, uh, I believe, coming in a couple of weeks and just wanted to call out here. So uh, with Visual Studio Team Services, uh, you can have work item tracking set up. Any proactive alert that comes up, any exception you have, you can just uh, right click, create a work item, and manage it with Visual Studio Team Services. Another powerful thing with Application Insights is uh, how it is designed to be flexible and extensible to suit your particular needs. So all our SDKs are open sourced today on GitHub. You can go there, check it out, and uh, optimize it for your particular web platform uh, or service. You can continuously export all your data to an, uh, your own private Azure blob storage, put it to SQL, uh, or uh, any other data center that you have. Uh, we have enabled a new webhooks integration, so if you're using any third-party alerting mechanisms, uh, you can integrate our alerts with that. And uh, you can uh, also visualize all application insights telemetry data with the Power BI uh, integration. So you can generate these powerful uh, visualizations that I am sure you would be loving uh, how Power BI does it, and now you have the power to do that with the App Insights data. One of the examples I like to talk about is about a partner, uh, Aluma. So uh, they are a, a data integrator uh, uh, who take various streams of data, including application insights. You can tweak that data midstream, uh, filter it, uh, uh, like create some new uh, uh, like extensions on it, and put it into a data warehouse, for example, Amazon Redshift, which can power the next level of data processing capabilities. So this is just one partner, and we are open for uh, more partnerships. So if you are interested to talk, about, uh, talk to us about uh, if you would be interested to uh, partner with Application Insights, uh, we would love to talk to you. So let's get back to Darren and see if there are some interesting uh, capabilities he wants to show. Yeah. Um, and uh, just to give you a sense of the additional opportunities for this telemetry, we've spoken a lot about developers and support staff and so on, but the wealth of telemetry is actually hugely um, valuable for business users and actually the business and understanding the impact and the, uh, uh, the positive impact your solution's having. So actually, we take the data out of Application Insights using continuous export. It shoves uh, JSON exported, uh, format exported files into Azure storage. We use Azure Data Factory to then create a bunch of different data sets, and we use Power BI. So just very, very quickly, just to give you an idea of um, uh, kind of fan activity, let's look at um, 
Yeah, look at this one here. So again, this is Power BI data. This is just powerbi.com. We can actually see where visualization of where are people in the world. We can actually see the, <clears throat> the hourly peaks. So this was a football match here. So you can see this kind of major peak in, in traffic here. You can see the age range of people as well, because we've actually got profile information about the people when they register and sign in using Facebook. We can see how long they're spending, which devices they're doing. Interestingly, I'm not seeing Windows devices there, just iOS and Android. Oh, well. Um, you can go ahead and kind of filter down. Um, and again, actually inside the mobile application as well, we take the page view information. And we've got a, 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 a view here. The bigger the box, the more, the more times that, that page is navigated to. So start screen and main menu and playing video is obviously kind of a, a popular area. If I go ahead and drill in to, for example, a match day here, you should say, see, I think something like a virtual ticket will refresh shortly if the network's going to hold up. Um, and actually, actually see that the, the navigation uh, behavior and all the various panels will change as we go along. So the, the telemetry that's generated for, app, for developers and for operations is fantastic, but don't miss the trick of actually being able to use this for creating kind of business insights as well. So again, this is a, a relatively straightforward, oh, I didn't click on it properly. So again, you can see how the, um, the navigation kind of behavior changes, <laughs> he says. Oh, well, it's not, it's not updating for whatever reason. Oh, hang on, that's why. I can't even use my own demo. So again, you, you can see that the, uh, uh, the various uh, profiles change. So Power BI, another great consumer for this data as well. And one thing I forgot to mention is um, with the, um, uh, cust the application analytics queries, you can actually export those into Power BI as well. There's an export feature, and it gives you a query which you can put into Power BI as well. Thank you. Thanks, Darren. These are uh, fantastic visualizations and the kind of uh, interesting insights you can get powered with application insights data. So, okay, so all these things that you saw today, uh, just quickly want to say that getting started is extremely easy. If you already have an existing uh, application uh, deployed, you do not want to touch it, redeploy it, you can just add our Azure extensions or the status monitor agent and start capturing these uh, events uh, automatically. If you have the application code, if you can instrument and redeploy, you will get the full power of application insights. So if you're using Visual Studio, Eclipse, or just a simple HTML JavaScript uh, website, you can get started pretty easily. And some uh, popular questions that uh, I have been facing over the past couple of days in the booth, I just wanted to uh, throw these out uh, to you, uh, about privacy and security. So application insights does not collect any PII or personally identifiable information by default. We only collect anonymous data, and it's up to you as a developer to see what do you send to application insights. We follow all Azure security and compliance policies, and you can see in our documentation what exactly do we send to application insights. About data storage. So today, the data is stored in our application insights cloud backend. It's stored in the US data centers today. And yes, we have been hearing requests uh, to store it in uh, some other uh, data centers across the world, and we are working on that. The next is about performance impact. Does application insights impact my application performance? Well, it all depends on the kind of instrumentation you do. And one of the stories that Darren used to tell me is that Real Madrid tried their application with and without application insights and essentially did not see any impact. So uh, try it out and uh, tell us if you see any impact with application insights. Uh, with, uh, so as long as application insights uh, is in preview, even then we provide to you 24, uh, uh, 24 by 7 free customer support. So you can go to Azure, file your customer request, and uh, get uh, those support tickets uh, free of cost. And did we mention, it's free to get started. So uh, go out there, uh, go to our Azure website, and see uh, the details, videos, documentation that you need about application insights. And yes, please do uh, get started. It's free, and it's extremely easy. Mira. OK. So just to summarize. You hear me? OK. Just to summarize, I think that by now you probably figured that we are pretty excited about our new capabilities, including the proactive detection, the ability to answer almost any question immediately with analytics, as, uh, as Darren showed you. The, I think the biggest query took 18 seconds, the huge yeah. one. Yeah. And how it's all integrated into your ALM uh, um, workflow. 
Also, you got to see some uh, comments we got from customers and, and their feedback and how excited they are. And I would like to end with one of my uh, favorite, uh, Cernade, who is a legal software provider that basically told us that using application insights, they were able to optimize their application, improve the user experience, and actually become more competitive. So what's not to like about it, right? So as Rahul said, it's very easy to get started. It's free to get started. Give it a try. And do, it, uh, do tweet to us. Our handle is at App Insights. Uh, any questions, any feedback, we would love to engage with you on the social media platform. And uh, yes, please uh, fill out yeah. the uh, evaluation form. Uh, that would uh, help us a lot. Thank you. OK. <laughs>